Another surprise. Oh, John. And this is the TV that we watch each other um, do our patient encounters. What's up YouTube and welcome to another beautiful day in the life of a medical student. If you're new here, my name is J.R. Smith. I'm a first year medical student at the Mayo Clinic and I make videos where I share helpful tips and strategies for students pursuing careers in medicine as well as just documenting my own journey. So if that interests you, go ahead and tap that subscribe button and tap that bell so you don't miss out. It is currently Monday, 6.30 in the morning and I have a few exciting things that I have going on today. But first things first, gotta help wifey get going for work. And as you guys can see, we start Christmas decorations early in the Smith house. What are you doing, huh? What you doing, dude? Chilling. <laughs> you always chilling. It's Monday. Monday. Fun day. Monday fun day. <laughs> Any words of encouragement for people on this Monday? Do your best. There we go. And forget the rest. That's what I tell my kids. There we go. <laughs> All right, now that Madison is squared away and on her way to work, we're back in the office and I can fill you guys in on what we have going on today. So one thing that I'm really looking forward to is a part of our basic doctoring curriculum. And so basic doctoring is kind of teaching us the art form of medicine. There's a science form, you know, of medicine, the textbook information knowledge. But then there's also an art to being able to practice medicine in a way that really makes an impact on your patients outside of just treating them for their primary concern. And so today we have what's called complex interview skills. So as medical students, one of our responsibilities is to learn how to take a patient's history. So if a patient comes in, we have to figure out what their chief complaint is, learn a little bit more about that, learn a little bit about their family history, their social history, things like that, that may play a role in whatever disease processes that they may be experiencing. And then we transfer this information back to our attending, our consultant that we're working with, and then they come back in and then they are able to kind of have a better understanding of the entire picture. And so we've had a few cases in the past that we've practiced and the first one was just a very basic introductory level of history taking just making sure that we kind of know the process of how to ask the patient certain things and um, you know introduce ourselves and kind of just go through a very basic surface level experience and then we've also had an experience where it's been a specific challenge um, whether that be a female patient who I see who doesn't want to see me because I'm a male or um, having a patient who is upset about a waiting time and they come in and they're even more upset to see a student and so you just have to kind of navigate around these specific instances. It's better to practice in these cases because we're sure to experience them when we're actually you know, rounding on patients and things like that and to be able to have this, this practice is, is very valuable. And so we're in this room with about two to three of our classmates as well as a consultant who is kind of leading and overseeing everything and one by one, um, each student is going to leave this room and go into the clinic room to meet a patient. And now in this clinic room, the entire visit is being videotaped and then streamed basically to the room where the other students and the consultant. And so everybody is able to kind of watch your experience. And so it can definitely be a little intimidating. Um, you know, most of us don't really know how exa exactly to go about all of this stuff, but it's beneficial because after we have that experience and we get to come back, usually with the actor, um, and the attending will ask the actor how they felt that we did um, and then they'll ask us how we felt that we did um, Then they'll ask the other classmates how they felt that we did and then they'll give their um, Their their insight as well and it's usually good things as well as things that we need to improve on I think it's important to get comfortable learning to be able to receive criticism we are at the lowest level of knowledge and experience and so it's only right that we're going to have a lot of areas where we can improve and the better that we're able at receiving this information, the better we're gonna be able to actually improve and make that real impact when we actually have our real own patients. And so um, that's usually what this entails. Um, I'm gonna bring you guys along for the ride and I'm super excited about it. But first I need to do my Anki because every morning I do my Anki, usually way before, it's about seven in the morning right now. Um, but running a little late today, but it's nice because I don't have anything other than basic doctoring and that's at one. So I'm gonna do some Anki and I'll see y'all in a bit. So I just finished 
my do Anki cards for today. Um, it is 9.16. We just got um, an email saying that we actually have a meeting, and it's an optional meeting, but to kind of go over potential ways that the curriculum can be improved, which is so awesome. One thing that I found out, um, at least here, is that a lot of the faculty and administration, they always reach out to the students um, after courses, during courses, before courses, and just say, you know, how did things go? What are you looking forward to? What can be improved so that the next group can have a little better of an experience? And since this has been going on for so long, we've actually been able to experience a ton of benefits, but being the kind of COVID class, a lot of the curriculum did have to change. And so they're basically just offering a meeting to kind of discuss uh, how we felt during certain, certain aspects of the curriculum so far. That meeting is in about an hour and a half. I've actually felt pretty good with the curriculum so far, so I don't think I'm gonna need to um, attend that meeting, but again, grateful that they offer the opportunity. So now I'm just gonna take a little break, probably scroll through Instagram, check social media, uh, maybe even turn on ESPN, get caught up with, with all sports news um, before I have to prepare for a basic doctoring, and I will check in with you guys then. Right, it's about 11 in the morning. I finished breakfast. I was able to catch up on the sports news and even the normal news, even though that's usually not as fun. Um, but I was also able to kind of just scroll through Instagram, chill, relax for a little bit, give myself like an hour or so rest. Um, and then I just got out of the shower. So I'm halfway dressed, ready for basic doctor. And we have to be suited and booted um, when we go and do this because we're going to have a patient involved, even though it's not a real patient, it's just a standardized acting patient. But um, still important to kind of be in this dress, but I wanted to walk you guys through in a little more detail what this basic doctoring course looks like and what exactly goes into the medical student's responsibility in terms of taking a patient history. And so again, as a medical student, we're able to play a role in a patient's experience and be a part of the team that's treating them. Um, and so usually our role is to go in and get the patient's history. And so this may be while the consultant or the attending doctor who is the doctor overseeing this patient may be rounding on other patients or whatever. Um, we get to go in and be able to kind of just get a brief history, well, a detailed history, and then report that in a brief way, in a succinct way, so that the attending, when they go in and see the patient now, has a brief um, overview of exactly what's going on. And so to do this, um, we have to practice just walking in. We introduce ourselves. So, you know, I would say, hello, my name is J.R. Smith. I'm on so-and-so service. Um, can I get your name and your date of birth? And so one of the reasons why we wanna get the patient's name, we're actually gonna already be able to see the name and the date of birth on the chart, um, but it's a good idea to be able to know how they wanna be called. Um, you know, if somebody's name was John Rudolph Smith and they prefer to be called a JR, they may say, yeah, my name's John Rudolph, feel free to call me JR or whatever. And now I know as the uh, medical student there that I'm gonna to refer to this patient as JR as we move forward. Um, and then patient age, just the age of the patient's also good to know just in terms of being able to differentiate certain things that may be going on. Um, and then the main thing that we wanna do outside of building rapport, so this also is gonna give us the opportunity to build rapport with a patient. If they come in wearing your favorite football team's um, hat, you can talk about that for a quick second or something and just kind of build that relationship and that connection. But again, the main reason that we're seeing them is to get this history of present illness. And so the reason, the primary reason that they came in today. And so, you know, the normal thing that we would say is what brings you in today? And then the patient will go on to explain the main thing that brought them in today. And we want to get more information about that. When did it start? How severe is it? You can ask the patient to rate the pain from one to 10. Are there certain things that aggravate it, certain things that relieve it? And so that's going to be the history of the present illness. That's the most important important aspect of history taking. Um, but there's other things that as medical students, we wanna make sure that we get um, in order to kind of get the, again, the most detailed history as possible. And these things include past medical history, um, things, other experiences that they had where they had to be hospitalized or surgeries, um, certain medications that they're taking, um, certain medications that they may be allergic to, family history. So has there been any significant illnesses in immediate family members like parents or siblings? And also social history. What's their relationship status? Do they have children? Do they drink alcohol or use tobacco products or any other illicit drugs? What's their sexual history? Have they experienced any specific stressors that are notable? And during COVID-19, this is a pretty important question, I think, that, that, that we should be asking people because there's a lot of mental illness right now that people are battling. And then to finish, we do this review of systems, kind of this head-to-toe exam you know, have you experienced any headaches, any difficulty seeing, any difficulty eating, any hair loss, any chest pain, any abdominal pain, all these kind of things you can kind of work your way down um, just to make sure that again, we're covering everything. We don't want the patient to leave without having been able to express everything that's been going on if there are any additional problems outside of that primary concern. 
And then again, we bring all of this information to the physician and then they are going to be able to use that to determine the best course of action with this particular patient. So this is what we're gonna be doing today. It's awesome, I'm super excited. Um, supposedly the cases have been pretty severe, um, but I will definitely let you guys know what my experience is. And I'm just gonna continue reviewing for a little bit now and I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. All right, we are suited and booted and ready to go. I just let Blaze go potty outside so he doesn't go potty inside. And now I'm gonna head up to campus. I'll see you guys in a little bit. So I had an umbrella, but it's too windy, but it's raining and I'm in a suit. So I'm a little conflicted. Don't wanna show up drenched, but it's gonna carry me into the street. The good thing is the rain isn't supposed to pick up too much until about an hour or so. So I'll be sprinting when I'm finished, but at least I won't be drenched when I start. Woo, pray for you, boy. All right, so just got here. Got here a little early so I can show you guys. This is going to be the room that we all sit at. And this is the TV that we watch each other um, do our patient encounters. So we'll be sitting in this room and then each student will go and do their history taking and the rest of us will watch them. It's a little nerve wracking the first few times, but it's something I look forward to. So I'm gonna get ready and I'll see you in a bit. All right guys, so I just finished and I was told that we currently have things in our mailbox, in our student lounge. So we all have like a little mail bin, which is always nice because sometimes it's candy. <laughs> and it is candy, as well as a booklet that we have to kind of fill out for something. But I'm gonna head outside really quick and then I will update you guys on how it went. Whew. I was gonna talk to you guys while I was walking back to my car, but the wind was terrible. I didn't want you guys hearing all that. I don't think you can hear me with all this wind. But again, I just got out of my basic doctoring session. It is 2.45 and it was awesome. So again, these are certain, they're putting us in certain clinical scenarios that may be more challenging than just the basic um, kind of case where somebody comes in, it seems pretty easy, they leave, everybody's happy. Um, so cases range from somebody being uncomfortable or, so, or being angry that you were late or being angry that you're a student and not a doctor and, um, and just kind of practicing how you deal with those things. And so my case today was the case of um, a husband and a wife coming in together. And so an elderly couple and the patient was the husband and um, the wife was more was the one who was more concerned about what was going on. And so she was the one who was speaking the majority of the time. And it just kind of uh, was for me, it was practice to be able to, again, focus on the patient, still appreciate the insight that the wife has and still give her the freedom to be able to voice um, some of her concerns. Um, and again, she's giving me a lot more information because she feels like it's something more serious than the husband. Um, and so all the things that she was saying were um, important, important for me to still know. But again, my priority is the patient. And in this case, it was the husband. And so just kind of being able to walk that fine line of engaging with the wife and letting her know that all of her um, views are appreciated and all of the details um, on her husband are appreciated, but also making sure that I have that one-on-one -on -one connection with the patient. In this case, it was the husband. So I think I did well, the feedback went well. Again, all of these experiences, they're, they're that exactly, just experiences for me to be able to grow off of and build off of. And so when I see it in a real life situation, it's not gonna be my first time seeing it. So I really appreciate how we have these standardized um, patients in our simulation center. So now I'm gonna head home. I still have to prepare for my meeting that I have this evening. Gonna ditch the suit, even though I like wearing it. And I will see y'all in a little bit. All right, so Madison just got home as well, um, and we actually had a few shipments at the front door, so um, this is exciting. We have some exciting things that we are expecting as well as a few things that we actually don't even know what they are, but we wanted to op open them up with you guys, um, and I'm excited because one thing is actually pertinent to the channel, so um, you guys will see that eventually, but what's the first thing we got, baby? You can just... You can oh. just <laughs> I got this Blink Mini so I can spy on my dog when I'm at work. <laughs> <laughs> we actually got something from Mayo. And so I, this is what I absolutely, I don't actually know what this is, but it kind of has this super cool Mayo seal on it. Is it an apron? <laughs> it's literally an apron, guys. Put this to good use. <laughs> 
free apron in the mail Shout from your school. Mayo. All right, so this is the one that I'm super excited about, guys. We have no Ooh. idea what it is. No idea. But we have. I have a suspicion about an this inkling. one though. Is it the king? I still am not a hundred percent sure, but the inkling is getting stronger. I um, purchased a new camera to upgrade. They both came. Another surprise. Oh, John. All right, guys. I'm not going to tell you the whole thing about this yet because Dang. I'm going to have to make a whole video on what on what's coming next. I'll just say look forward to a lot better content, a lot better, um, a lot more professional content. Thank a huge you, surprise. Amazon. Yes. Thank you, Amazon. <laughs> Let's go. Also, I'm going to leave a link in the description below to all of these things if you're interested in some of the products that we use and we love. So that is it. We are going to, let's see, it's 4.30. We have a dinner that we're going to with some of my classmates at eight. I have a quick um, meeting this evening at seven, um, but it's only 4.30. So we're just gonna spend some time together before that. And Blaze sounds like he um, misses his parents. So we're gonna check in with you guys later. Bye. All right, guys, it is currently 10.55 p.m. We just got home from having a nice kind of dinner um, with some of my classmates, and I got to introduce Madison to some of my class, which was amazing, um, and it just was a good time to kind of reconnect. We haven't been able to kind of hang out as much since Anatomy's been over um, and just kind of spend some time with my group again. We spent so much time together as groups during Anatomy and during these courses, but we hadn't had too much time to um, since. And of course, got to introduce them to this cutie right here. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We're super tired. We usually go to bed at- Like three hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna knock out, we're gonna get some sleep and get ready for Tuesday, the next day. Today's Monday. So um, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you smack, smash that like button. It always helps this channel. It helps kind of show the YouTube algorithm that these videos are worth showing to people. Um, if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe, tap that bell, new videos every week. You're not gonna wanna miss a step in this journey. And of course, until the next one, keep evolving and we'll see you guys soon. <laughs> I don't check my mailbox too often. And this is definitely a Halloween candy bag. So the cookies are a little hard, but I think they're still good. How, how long would you wait to eat cookies if they've been sitting in your mailbox? Is, is a week and a half pushing it?